Hi, welcome to AI Late to Class. We've been on holiday for two weeks and it seems like there's been six months worth of advancements in AI in the past two weeks. Anyway, today's video is gonna be about the Flux Context Dev Model Local Install with Comfy UI, trying a few different speed ups and low VRAM techniques such as T-Cache, Mag Cache, Flux Turbo LoRa, downscaling in the GGUF models. For those of you that don't know what Flux Context is, we're on the Hugging Face site for it here by Black Forest Labs. You can see what it does by the images, like in here there's a dog and then obviously remove dog from photo. Um, this one over here, you've got a sort of a puppet character, alien put it on a skateboard so you can get the idea that it's like an AI version of Photoshop and yes chat GPT can do that and so can Gemini. Gemini is a little bit better than chat in my opinion um, but you can got a little bit more power on this on a local install and Comfy UI where you can add your LoRa's and other sort of features from Comfy UI. And there has been another one called Bagel, which was uh, another open source one, but that really was problematic with Windows, quite large files. So it's great to have Flux Context, the dev model, now able to work within Comfy UI. So, what do we need to do to get started? First of all, run Comfy UI, get the picture without snake that I provide, drop it in there, and you're ready to go. However, you might have a lot of red nodes in that, so if so, use your manager in Comfy UI and update that. If you don't have a manager like me, you can do that manually. Ask me in the comments if you have problems with that. I might do a tutorial later on. Um, but with the portable version, you can go into your Comfy UI folder and you'll find a command window for update um, if you don't have a manager. However, once we're in here, we won't have the models yet, so we need to go and find the models. The best way is to go into Hugging Face and type in Flux Context. And that first one, that's Black Forest Labs, click on that. On the right hand side, look down at the quantizations, click on the eight models. You'll see a group of things there, right? The ones that we need to look at, the best one that I recommend if you've got a NVIDIA GPU is the FP8. So click on that files and versions and you'll choose either one of those I've got the top one there but um, you know that's these links will be in the underneath the vid in the comments anyway so going back and looking at these others if you want the GGUF versions there's two places here um, we've got it on this guy here, Buller Winds, um, and there's another one, Quaint, that I'll put in the links as well, and this Quaint stack here, so um, files and versions, and you can choose which one suits your GPU if you don't have much, obviously start with a small one and build it up until your computer can't handle it, it's probably the best way of doing it. Um, but yeah, that's where we'll get those from. Uh, looking back at what else do we need, if you aren't familiar with the text encoder and the clip L safe tenses, um, I'm just going to put links to those because I've done that in my other videos. Same with the VAE, you're going to need all of that. Um, there's really not much more to it than that. Um, so in this example, we've got a snake here. If we look in at it, 
it doesn't look so good it's sort of come off the finger there it doesn't sort of make sense typical AI not doing things as you want it so we want to remove the snake so we've got in here remove snake from image and when we run that um, that'll go through this is the FP8 version right here's our result from that did exactly what I wanted it removed the snake made the finger look normal um, as it can do with that costume on uh, if it doesn't come out too good there is a something we can have a look here on the flux guidance I've just got this one at 2 um, but I've gone on to chat GBT and they've given an explanation of flux guidance values there so you can type that in yourself um, we'll just look at that but uh, as you can see things that are under 2.3 are quite good for most things um, and I've tried higher values and you get that sort of you know that burnt AI look when you go too high um, and this one already has width and height that I've already allocated so it doesn't really matter about your input image what size or resolution that is um, it can be anything your output those numbers that I've got in there are what's recommended is good settings um, 1024 are also by 1024 also quite good as well and I do have up the top here looking over at this I've got what sort of like a reverse upscale so if I turn that on and I've got scale by 0.5 scale by half so this is a downscaler and we can use that to speed up our process just to see you know if we're doing something fast and to get a quick look of what's going on that is quite helpful for that but for quality reasons I have it turned off if you have a um, good GPU and you don't mind waiting or that then I just keep that turned off if you're wanting to use more than one reference image like uh, vase then uh, drag this double image that I've provided and having looked down here we've got now we've got the image that I've just made plus a snake image and when we run that so here's the result from that um, not quite the same snake sort of did what I wanted but the pattern is different I mean I uh, should go over the prompt here make the snake wrapped around the woman's body um, but yeah it's a matter of just going over and over trying different prompts to get this to work i think i should mention here actually on the model on this one i've got connected is the fp8 as i said before but to the side there i've got the guff unit loaded there so you can just if you're using the guff model you can just unattach that and grab that one there and then put that over there so it'll work the same way to start speeding things up a bit more we're going to use the uh, mag cache so drag the mag photo over drop that in and you can see down the bottom here i've got the mag cache there and just leave those settings as is and you can just click run everything else is the same as it is before but now we just have a speed up there um, unclicked uh, on that is the T cache and above that is another Laura you can put anything in there it currently has the flux skin detailer but we have the turbo Laura above that so we can just click on T cache and we can add that to sometimes um, you can try just T cache and not the mag cache, but or either way around. Um, I found adding both of them came out with a good result. 
and um, we can then go on and use the Turbo LoRa um, by turning that on as well. Just make sure when you've got the Turbo LoRa that in your steps over here I've got 20. You need to change that to 12. That's the only difference with that. So with all of those, um, it is very fast. Uh, just if you want the LoRa, the, the actual turbo LoRa you'll need to go over to here I do ha I will have it in the comments but it's the flux one turbo LoRa and click download there and you'll find out that that will go really fast with all of those connected I do have the separate photos will have the LoRa with T cache and T cache and mag cache but there's no need you can click them yourself it's very easy once you get used to it um, so yeah that's it for today um, there's a lot to sort of have a go at um, if you like this subscribe so flux context is a great tool for all of those Photoshop type editing but I use it for video, right? So just to get one image of somebody and then you ask it just to turn them slightly and or get them into different pose so that you can then use something like the one models to make them move forward or move them on a side angle or anything like that. Um, I've found it extremely good for doing that. So yeah, um, we'll see you in the next video.